Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining us again. And um, perhaps you could just start by telling us exactly what adenomyosis is. Now, adenomyosis is a condition that affects the womb or uterus. So the adenomyosis, if we think of um, the womb being lined by uh, a layer of wallpaper, so the inner space in the womb where the babies grow and where the periods are made is lined with a cell layer, and these cells are called endometrial cells. So every month they produce a um, period and the wallpaper gets changed um, and these uh, cells are shed. Now, in adenomyosis, um, these cells are not just lining the, the wall uh, of the womb like a wallpaper. Some of these cells have migrated into the wall and they form little nests of uh, endometrial cells and every month uh, around period time they make their own micro period inside the wall of the womb and um, which is, is a bit like a formation of a, a bruise so it, it leads to that part of the wall of the womb which is usually the back wall of the womb to become thickened and in, in layman language, I call it an angry womb because the womb is, is very inflamed. Uh, it is spongy. So during an operation, if I, if I touch it, I can see how, how spongy it is. And that is because these endometriosis, um, uh, endometrial cells have made these cell nests that make periods. So what's the main difference between endometriosis and adenomyosis? The location. Now, with uh, adenomyosis, we have these cells that should be actually lining the wall of the womb, but they mm -hmm. are misplaced into the wall of the womb. And in endometriosis, cells that should be lining the womb are displaced even further. They are displaced uh, to the pelvis. And that could be around the ovaries, that could be affecting the bowels, the bladder, or the diaphragm. So they are further, they are away from the womb, but they're also displaced cells. Endometriosis is a disease of the whole pelvis, and adenomyosis is a disease mainly of the womb. And how is it diagnosed? In the old days, the only way of diagnosing uh, adenomyosis was to do a hysterectomy and send the womb to the lab. And then in the lab, they would do a microscope diagnosis and find these cell nests and make the diagnosis of adenomyosis. Nowadays, we um, also have a ultrasound and a MRI scan available and they can help in making the diagnosis because um, they can look at the uh, thickening of the wall of the womb and um, the, there's also a, a pattern within the muscle of the wall of the womb that is not as equal or homogeneous and often the Ultrasound scanners use the word heterogeneous. Some, uh, uh, some sonographers have also likened it to a pattern that looks a bit like a tropical rainstorm. So this reflects the, the signals the uh, ultrasound picks up from uh, these displaced um, cell nests of endometrial cells. And what are the main symptoms to look out for? Or how would someone know if if they were likely to, to have it? Yes, there, there's a bit of an overlap with endometriosis pain in that um, there's period pain. Now, in adenomyosis, um, periods are also heavier than average. Um, if you look at the um, age, uh, the, sort of the peak in age is, is a little bit later in adenomyosis than it is in endometriosis, but 
Having said that, uh, it's also been diagnosed in teenagers, but as a general rule, uh, it is more sort of late 30s and 40s, whereas endometriosis is oftentimes 10 years younger um, than that. And what I often hear is that women uh, with endometriosis um, often complain of uh, pain during sex and women with adenomyosis often say the pain occurs after sex and it can last for uh, hours or even uh, a day. Um, I also often hear the complaint of a dragging and a heavy sensation in the pelvis. Okay, and are people with endometriosis more likely to have adenomyosis yes. or do they exist separately? They often um, coexist in the most severe form of uh, endometriosis where we have something called deep endometriosis and they're, they're then uh, are during surgery I often see a combination of endometriosis uh, that uh, Sort of invades the space behind the neck of the womb at the very top of the vagina. Sometimes it affects bowel and is also linked to adenomyosis. And then sometimes for surgeons, it's really difficult to understand where does the adenomyosis finish and where does the endometriosis start because they are they are sort of flowing flowing together. The endometriosis implant and the adenomyosis and sometimes um, you have a situation where as a surgeon you're pretty sure you have removed all visible endometriosis but people continue to get pain after um, surgery um, and that is because the adenomyosis is still there. Yeah so if someone is, is having a laparoscopy for suspected endometriosis can adenomyosis be spotted at the same time or or would it be a separate diagnosis process well adenomyosis um, is usually already um, spotted on the imaging um, okay. for instance a an experienced ultrasonographer can pick up adenomyosis and and during surgery um, the appearance of the womb can often point towards adenomyosis. Well, what I sometimes do is I, I take an instrument and touch the womb and see if I can make a dent in the womb to sort of get an idea about the sponginess of the womb. So these are all indirect markers. Um, the, the real proof of adenomyosis would be to send a piece of the womb to the lab to get of the 100 percent microscope diagnosis but we we don't usually do that because um doing a, a removing the womb is not always the right treatment uh, for that client at that time of their lives mm -hmm. so uh, the definitive treatment for adenomyosis would be a hysterectomy but we would only offer that once we're sure that the family is complete and there's no regret because nowadays we have more to offer than just doing the hysterectomy um, the Mirena system is that coil um, that uh, or did have to call it the intrauterine device and the brand name is the Mirena system it releases a hormone from the family of progesterone um, that thins out the lining of the womb and the lining of the womb that is dispersed into the wall of the womb gets also thinned out by the um, medicated coil by the IUD so that is a really good treatment of putting to sleep these cells that have been mislaid in the wall of the womb and the beauty about the uh, intrauterine device is that the medication mainly works locally it's a bit like when you put nail varnish on your nails that you see the beauty where you actually put it and not that much gets absorbed into the whole body so the the dose of medication is is relatively low it's much much lower than taking tablets um, 
as compared to using the IUD. So that, that is a very, very useful treatment. And currently, um, there's plenty of research um, uh, being done to look a little bit more deeply into how this device uh, achieves the temporary shrinkage of these cells. Yeah, and you mentioned research there. Is there much research into this condition going on? And, and if so, how much research and, and perhaps, you know, how do you think that research will help people in the future? Um, well, I just today I, I looked up uh, on the research register, which is um, public, it's open access. It's called clinicaltrials.gov. Um, so any anyone can type in adenomyosis um, and, and trials that are going on and the majority of trials actually um, looking at the um, uh, the intrauterine device or hormone um, coil um, and then there's a study uh, going on in Asia um, that looks at uh, the use of ultrasound, high frequency ultrasound to dry up or destroy these cells. Um, uh, there, there is another, this is a, a treatment that in some countries is already done and established for fibroids. Fibroids are also um, located in the wall of the womb, but they are muscle balls rather than cells. However, uh, it's now being looked at whether this technique can get rid of these cells. Uh, another fibroid treatment is to block the blood supply to the uterus. Uh, and there's a trial going on to see how effective that is um, for adenomyosis. No, that's really useful to know. Thank you. And is it something that's still felt post menopause, or is it a condition that tends to the symptoms tend to ease down after after that yeah. time? It is completely um, related to the menstrual cycle. So if the menstrual cycles are being put to sleep either by using medication or naturally through the menopause, um, then uh, the adenomyosis would, would dry up. And is there a cure for adenomyosis? Adenomyosis, um, the, the menopause would be the cure. Uh, it is uh, because it's inbuilt in the uterus. Some, some women benefit from having a hysterectomy once their family is complete. Although I have to say not 100% of women get rid of the pain. And that is probably due to the way the nervous system has rewired itself during the chronic pain. So although hysterectomy uh, helps many women, it's, it's not for everyone. Um, the the menopause um, seems to be the the a good cure. Uh, again, some women might might still get pain after the menopause, but the vast majority get better. Now, if uh, so, as a as a doctor, I'm asking myself how much of the pain is from adenomyosis and how much of the pain is from endometriosis, is asking these questions whether there's a dragging sensation uh, and whether the, the pain is more after sex um, and the periods are heavy, these would be pointers towards adenomyosis. And during the examination, if the pain is very much in the middle of the pelvis, um, that would also make me think that adenomyosis might play a role. And the next step would then be to ask an experienced ultrasonographer to help me uh, get pictures and find out if adenomyosis can be seen on scan. Okay. And is there a pathway of care for women with this condition? Obviously, with endometriosis, we have the NICE guidelines and the quality standard guidelines. Is there something similar for adenomyosis? Do you know? Well, adenomyosis is in, in all the doctor's books, but not as prominent as endometriosis. Um, 
So although it is mentioning guidelines, I'm not aware of a guideline that just exists for adenomyosis, but I think um, you can help your doctor uh, by pointing out that the pain is period related and how heavy the periods are and whether you get pain during or after sex. So adenomyosis um, is uh, something that that is relatively common, uh, but a bit like endometriosis in the past, people don't appreciate how, how common it is. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that is why, like with endometriosis, sometimes treatment gets, gets delayed. In terms of fertility, um, what impact does it have on, on someone's fertility? Yes. There is research that shows that adenomyosis might be linked to a slightly increased rate of early miscarriages, but it is certainly not a black and white situation. And I had many, many patients I looked after in the gynae clinic with uh, um, adenomyosis and later that I saw them on the labor ward. So it, it's certainly not a black and white situation. Um, and although there might be uh, a slightly negative impact on um, pregnancy. Um, many, many women with adenomyosis have successful pregnancies. Good. No, that's that's really good. Good to know. And, and that brings us to the end of all the questions that we we had. I don't know if you want to want to add anything. I know you've been involved in in some research into this and you've done a presentation on it previously. So we'll link that um we'll link that below and add that to our, our website so people have got hold of that as well. But I don't know if there's anything else that you want to want to add at this stage. Yes, uh, I did mention that the intrauterine device, medicated coil, Mirena system, however you want to call it, uh, is effective. But uh, I often come across women who just don't like the idea of having a, a foreign body. Um, there are uh, other medications and um, as we said before, using the contraceptive pill in a three-monthly block uh, might be... Uh, valuable or even in, in a monthly way where you, you take a pill packet and then have a, a week's break might help. Um, there's also evidence of uh, using progesterone which can be used in, in tablet form, uh, the IUD form or as the pill injection. So there, there are many many choices and I think the Mirena system or IUD is probably um, the first line treatment, um, but nowadays uh, with um, you know some barriers to potential barriers to access, you could also try uh, the contraceptive pill and see if you get uh, a good response from from that. Okay, brilliant. No, thank you so much, Lisa. That's been really really helpful, and um, thank you for for joining us to to talk about it.